Wait. You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. The Boston Marathon continues, everybody. Welcome to the first, maybe it'll be an annual event, I don't know, but the first, we'll say, TV Guidance Counselor Boston Marathon, in which I'm releasing a bunch of episodes today that I had sort of backed up because I had been lucky enough to have a boon of great episodes, and they all feature people who either started in Boston, are from Boston, or currently live in Boston. It is the Boston Marathon. Get it? You see see what I did there? Uh, This episode is with Danielle Soto. Danielle actually is from Boston and started here, but we lost her to Los Angeles. She is out there pursuing comedy. She is a huge fan of the Golden Girls, as we get to in this episode. So without further ado, please enjoy the continuing Boston Marathon of TV Guidance Counselor with my guest, Danielle Silva. Soto, Daniel, welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome to my home. Thanks for coming by. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Yes, you should be excited. It's extre- it's an extremely exciting place, I think, for, for everybody. That's Just how, anyone. How I feel. Yeah. Uh, so the TV guide you've chosen is from uh, May 28th to June 3rd, 1988. And what uh, drew you to this TV guide? Well, I've always been a fan of television from the 70s and 80s for the most part. Okay. I grew up big time watching Nick at Night. I loved all the old shows and so I definitely wanted to pick something from prior to like my generation because You've made many people feel very old with these statements. <laughs> That's fine. So you, you were you born They don't in, know they don't know how old I am. Well, I could be 18. But 1988 prior to your generation. Well, I was born in 1988. Oof. So this was the year you were born. What yeah. what month were you born? I won't make January. Give away, but okay, so you so were, you were around this. at least then. <laughs> you were a few months into this. Yeah. Uh, and this has uh, the the final season of Family Ties is on the cover here. You have uh, Brian Bosnell, who was uh, Andy, mm-hmm. on, uh, who later went to jail for for beating his girlfriend. Uh, I don't know if you knew that. No. Nope. Uh, he moved to Colorado and was in punk rock bands. You can Google his um, his uh, mugshot. Is he for, still in Colorado? Uh, he may be. He may be. You should have. You should have. He's uh, he's got like a lot of facial piercings and uh, kind of got a methy thing going on. I don't know if he is in that world, but he's got that look. Okay, that kind of sounds him. like okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he felt pretty a lot far. of child stars. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so another interesting thing is, am I correct in saying you've never actually utilized a TV guide? I've never used a TV guide, but actually now that I'm looking at it, I'm getting flashbacks. So you think you have, but you repressed it, or it was just so unmemorable? That it well, was... I have a really bad memory, as our listeners will probably find out as we continue to talk. But was that in the newspaper? Like the no, TV? no. So there was TV Week, which was the free one that came in the newspaper, which was sort of like the low-rent TV Okay, guy. but did it have that format of like the... The grid. Diagram. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. the grid. The TV Guide grid was okay. utilized by other things later. That definitely. Uh, but it was innovated by TV Guide. Right. Yeah. That was a throwback for me. Yeah, because so, I, and I always noticed a, a strange correlation growing up, and I don't know if you'll agree with this or not, but there was always um, the people who used the TV Week from the newspaper, for some reason, always had toaster ovens. We had a toaster oven. Did you use the TV Week and yeah. not a TV Guide? Every <laughs> single time. I don't understand it. This is like, this rule has never been broken. Huh. The people who got TV Guide had toasters, these and are the people... TV Week are toaster oven people. I don't know why those two things are linked. These people need, like, gratification. So like, they're like quick. bagel pizza people. I need to eat this, and I need to know what's on it. I'm not. Tonight. I'm not paying for TV Guide, and I want to be able to melt cheese in a toaster oven. Yeah, we're demanding people. Wow. Well, it's once again my theory continues to be correct. Thank <laughs> you for uh, reinforcing that. Okay. So let's get right into it. Uh, Saturday night, uh, eight o'clock, May twenty eighth. 
I know what I would have watched, and I think you may uh, be uh, on the same page on this one, but what did you pick? You take the good, you take the bad, you take Perfect. them both, and then you have the facts of Absolutely. life. Absolutely, facts of life. This was uh, life. NBC's Powerhouse on Saturday night. This was sadly the final season of Facts of Life, uh, where they just kept trying to get spinoffs desperately right. for this show. Was this when Blair was the headmaster? She very nearly was the headmaster, uh, but it was uh, later, a couple weeks after that, she was the headmaster. So okay. what they tried to do was they did a two-part finale in which Blair purchased Eastland, and they wanted to do like a Facts of Life, The Next Generation. So Mrs. Garrett was on it? No, Mrs. Garrett uh, left in nine, season six, and, wow. and Beverly Ann Stickle, her cousin, replaced her, oh, played okay. by Cloris Leachman. And so, oh, uh, man. yeah, the whole last season, every third episode or so, they tried to do a spinoff. So they did one where Natalie moved to New York City and lived in a loft apartment with Richard Grieco and David Spade, which didn't go. <laughs> there was what they called backdoor pilots. Have you ever heard that term? No. So what a backdoor pilot pilot is is when a TV show uh, sort of shoehorns in new characters and introduces them on an established show to try and do a spin-off later. Gotcha. So if you've seen a show where you're like, I don't understand why they're all of a sudden hanging out in this bar all of a yes. sudden with these people we've never seen before. There's an episode of The Nanny like that. Yes, that's a backdoor pilot. They're all in a hair salon yes. with like these wacky hairdressers. And the main characters are very She's minor like roles. <laughs> yeah. So that's a backdoor pilot. So yeah. th- there were many shows that had that. They were always trying to do spin-offs. And so facts of like the final that, season. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's a little underhanded. Well, is an empty nest sort of? Empty Nest was uh, a genuine spinoff. It wasn't a backdoor pilot, but, but there it was, was a, a Golden Girls episode. It was a Golden Girls spinoff, right? But it, there was an episode called Empty Nest, correct? Where all those characters came in for no reason, like they had right. been best friends forever. Right. It did. It, it sort of. Empty Nest sort of bridged the gap between the true spinoff and the backdoor pilot because Richard Mulligan showed up in a few episodes of Golden Girls before that, like maybe one or two, I want to say. But you, you're probably a bigger Golden Girls fan <laughs> than I am. Uh, but yeah, then when they introduced his family and all these other previously unmentioned neighbors, yeah, yeah that's pretty much how a backdoor pilot works. It's weird. And then uh, Empty Nest was one of the few spinoffs that had a spinoff of its own. Nurses. Nurses, <laughs> which, is a rare, which is a rare thing. That's right. Uh, so they kept really trying. And so what, they, what their plan was was to continue the show with this sort of next generation of Eastland students. They let boys into the school that year, which is why Seth Green was in the episode. Oh, and Juliet Lewis was also one of the one of the uh, students there. So random how many like George Clooney was on that show. Oh yeah, for two Molly seasons. Ringwald was in the first season. For the first season, season when they like, fired everybody. Yeah. yeah Lex the Lake had stars. a lot of big stars on it. It was a great show. I prefer seasons six through nine myself. Like the final four years were the over our heads years were the much better years of Facts of Life in okay. my opinion. I like the seasons where it was like the four girls, Natalie, Joe, Blair, Tootie. Okay. And Mrs. You like Garrett. Your, I like so straight you like, up facts of life. Right. So like seasons three through six is like your, you like that sort of bridging the 70s and 80s with that. Yeah. Like I remember that episode where they met this girl named Tumpy who was okay. smoking weed yes. in her dorm room. Yes. And Natalie and Tootie were too young to know what was going on. Right. And they went to the record store and bought bongs from Mrs. Garrett, thinking that you they could jelly gifts. beans yes. in them. Yes, and she was like, what is this? Yeah, that's like my ideal facts of life. Well, like early, so in the later seasons, it got a little less serious, although there was the famous episode where Natalie lost her virginity to her boyfriend named Snake. Uh, <laughs> but they, the early seasons had some pretty grim, serious episodes. Like there was one where Natalie was sexually assaulted yeah. while dressed as... As, uh, Oliver Hardy from Laurel and Hardy of all things uh, there was a lot of suicides there was like three yeah uh, I there think was all kinds alcoholism of stuff. alcoholism I remember big. the one with Jermaine Jackson yes that was pretty devastating yeah, but they, that was a little later they that was bold cut Tootie they destroyed Tootie's uh, bust she had made of him yeah yes they thought it was a bomb yeah there and was an episode they got drunk Oh yeah, that happened frequently. Blair and Joe, yeah, I not as good they had wine or something as the Cosby Show episode where um, there is. Why am I Tempest Bledsoe? Why am I blanking on her character name? Uh, uh, the middle daughter on Denise? Cosby Show, not Denise. That's Lisa Bonet, not Rudy. Between Lisa <laughs> Bonet and Rudy. Um, 
Oh my god, I'll think of it later. But anyway, she she gets drunk and comes home drunk, and then they play a drinking game with her the next day with Rudy, and she thinks they're all getting drunk to teach her a lesson. That was a good oh, one. Oh, okay. But uh, Facts of Life was a great show. This is the absolute only pick you could have done at 8 o'clock. There was nothing else on yeah, that was worth watching. Some people would have gone with Star Trek The Next Generation. Those people are incorrect. They're wrong. Good. Uh, so let's move on to 8.30. Only really one choice here. Go ahead. Go for, it's your, your I pick. got nothing. You didn't pick anything? No. You didn't pick 227? No. I've never watched that. Though well, I you would really have had to like, have watched 227. I think had I been sitting in front of my television... You would have kept it on, NB- on NBC. I would have watched that or gotten a snack. So you've never seen 227? Mm-hmm. 227 was a great show. I love that lady from Sister Jack Sister. Jackie Harry. Yeah. yeah Jackie Harry is very funny. She was on Celebrity Fit Club, too. Yes, yes. Liked her a lot on that. I, uh, I liked it. You should follow her on Twitter. Oh, it's okay. It's very, very interesting <laughs> character. I'll uh, do that. She's very funny. So 227 started as a play. It was a play set in Washington, D.C., and it took place in um, a black... Uh, it wasn't intentionally black, but it was a... a like like a apartment building of all black people okay. in DC, and that's basically what the show is about. Yeah. And it was uh, Marla Gibbs who was on the Jeffersons. She played their housekeeper. If you ever watched the Jeffersons, yeah, it was a great show. This particular episode is really bizarre. So in this episode, uh, Sandra's friend Jesse aims to open a club called Two Gun Mary, and Mary dreams up a musical western showdown. So this is like a fantasy episode where they're all in the wild west. <laughs> it's very very strange. I'll have to check uh, that out. Uh, one of my favorites is Marla. Gibbs Gibbs' husband on the show is played by this guy, uh, Hal Williams. And most episodes, basically Hal Williams just wanting to eat his dinner and everybody's bothering him. But in my home, which I will show you after this, we do have an autographed photo in a frame of Hal Williams. And my favorite thing about it is it says, Hal Williams, actor. Wow. He felt the need to write actor, <laughs> it, which is great. Traumatic. So you, you should watch 227. You really missed out there. I'm going to check it out. Uh, Nine o'clock. Obviously, you probably went with Golden Girls. I went with Golden Girls. Golden Girls is my all-time favorite television show of any TV guide I could have picked up. And did you watch Golden Palace when it I, switched? So here's some background on me and Golden Girls. Okay. I didn't start watching Golden Girls until I was in college. So it was too late for Golden Palace at that point? Far too late, except I did catch it on YouTube. Okay. Like, I watched old episodes of it. So I did see the first season of Golden... I think there was only one season. Yeah, it was like half a season. It didn't even get that far. Yeah, I think eight episodes or something. Yeah, it was not very good. I did watch it. Um, There was an episode where B. Arthur comes back. Yes. And they kind of have an argument over how they're treating Sophia. Right. uh, If she's working too hard, if she needs to rest. And I did. I hate the episodes of. I shouldn't say hate. I love all of them, but the episodes. It's of okay Golden to hate girls. Them. No, no, it's not. It when they fight. I. There's you a, only like it when they get along. <laughs> See, most people enjoyed the fighting. Mm-mm, no, there's an episode where they all go bowling and they split up into two teams. This is on Golden Girls, not Golden Palace. Yeah. And I, I think I've seen that episode maybe like ten times, which and it is bothers a you. small amount. Because I don't like them being competitive with one another. I'm not. That's a little weird. Yeah. That's a little weird. You just want them all to get. And is it only Golden Girls that you have this issue with, or are there other shows? I haven't thought about where it. Where you're like, I, everyone can fight on other shows, but just not Golden Girls. Yeah, I think it's just the Golden Girls. There's another episode where Blanche and Sophia are fighting over a man, and I don't like that one because I just don't like them pitted against one another. So this such episode. A good team. This episode probably would have been all right for you then. So in this particular episode, it takes nerve, but Blanche makes a move on Ted, the brother of Dorothy's ex, when she learns he's a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. Putting the moves on Dorothy's ex's brother. It's a a good one. That's, um, That's a good one because Stan is in it. So you're a fan of... A lot of people would be like, oh, not a Stan episode. I love the Stan You love the Stan episodes. I think they're hilarious. I think that's B. Arthur at her best. Now, were you familiar with the cast of the Golden Girls from their previous series? Or was this the first introduction you had to any of them? I had seen episodes of... Are you talking like the Mary Tyler Moore show? Like knowing you had like Maude or the Mary yeah. Tyler Moore show. So I had seen the God Mary forbid, Tyler. Mama's Family. <laughs> I had seen Ugh. Mama's Family. It was when I was in high school. When I used to get dressed in the morning on TBS was Saved Very by the Bell. Very important every day to get dressed for the morning. <laughs> yes, I would watch Saved by the Bell, and then if I was running late, the next show would come on, and that was Mama's Family. 
So I what would catch, a like, weird yeah right collect. That's a very strange back hour. To back. Saved by the Bell and Mama's Family. Yeah, weirdly, Saved by the Bell out of those two shows is the more realistic show. <laughs> I know. They all, how rare is that? Like, you could go Saved by the Bell Hang Time, Saved by the Bell California Dreams. Sometimes it would be the college years. Yeah. And then Mama's Family. Which, I mean, Mama's Family is the opposite of college. Yeah. The complete polar opposite. What a terrible, terrible show. That's my least favorite sitcom of all time, Mama's Family. Oh, I want to think of my least favorite sitcom of all It home. really should be Mama's Family. There's nothing worse well, than Mama's yours. Family. Well, that's yours. I don't want to take that from you. Well, no, I think it should be everybody's. Oh, okay. If we could somehow... You're spreading if I, the word. If I had one wish, it would be to just erase Mama's Family from history. There must have been something good that came out of Mama's Family. No. Not even it ending was good enough to warrant <laughs> one positive thing to say going. about... Yeah, it should have just kept going. Because the end was bad, too. The end was bad, too. Uh, so, you, at 9 o'clock, you went with the Golden Girls. Uh, I probably, admittedly, would have gone with Doctor Who at this time. I liked Golden Girls quite a bit, but it was a repeat that night because we're into May, so it's kind of the repeat season. That's we're getting rough. into the summer. Yeah. So I would have gone with Doctor Who. It's a Tom Baker episode. It's the Robot of Death. I would have had to do it on PBS, but please forgive me. Uh, 9.30... What do you got? Uh, what are we on? Saturday? Saturday? I didn't pick anything. You didn't. You would have had. You had to go with Amen. What is that? Amen was Sherman Helmsley from from, the, from the, Jeffersons. the Jeffersons playing a deacon in a church. Okay. And that's pretty much the whole plot. Then I guess I would have. So you would have stuck with NBC all night. I think that's what what you what you, what you should have gone with. Uh, this episode of Amen in a weak moment, Thelma, who is Sherman Helmsley's daughter on the show. Uh, spills her feelings on the Reverend's answering machine, then her father goes out on a ledge to retrieve the embarrassing message. Wow. Ledges played a big part in a lot of sitcoms. I think Yeah, Family almost, Matters. Almost every sitcom had an Different episode where strokes. people were on a ledge. Facts of Life. Yeah. There was a grief counselor that worked in the last season, actually, of this season that we we're talking about, that worked in the youth center that Joe worked in. And she decided she can't take it anymore and stands out on a ledge. She'll kill herself. And Joe has to talk her off the ledge. Wow. That's interesting. Even like the newer like sitcoms that kind of pay homage to the older sitcoms. Like, have you ever seen Hot in Cleveland? I haven't. I, ha- I, I, was a little, I was a little wary of it. You might like it because it does pay a lot of tribute to the old sitcoms. They okay. have a ton of guest stars from the old days. Uh, when I saw it live in Los Angeles, oh, you went to a taping. I went to a tape. Was that the only taping of a sitcom or a TV show that you've ever been to? That's right. Yeah, that was my first and only. And I went by myself, and I wore my Betty White T-shirt. Nice. Okay, so the cast of Hot in Cleveland, first of all, is uh, Valerie Bertinelli. Yes, who, from Too Close. I mean, uh, not Too Close for Comfort. Um, one day at a time. One day at a time. Uh, and then there's uh, Jane Leaves from, from Frasier, and from the sitcom Throb. She was on a sitcom called Throb that took place in a hip new wave record label in New York City that oh, was on for three years. <laughs> she played like the um, the record executive that like signed people. She was like an A&R person. That's cool. And then there's uh, Wendy Malick yes, from, from Just, Just Shoot, Shoot Me. Me. And Dream On. Did you ever see Dream On on HBO? No. It was uh, Brian Ben Ben and John Landis produced it. It was the first uh, sitcom that they ever had on HBO. Excuse me. And it was this guy who was sort of uh, ruined by television growing up. So, like, the show is a regular sitcom, but all of his inner thoughts were clips from old TV shows. Whoa! Yeah. It's called Dream On. It's called Dream On. The first two seasons are on DVD. I want to see that. It was a pretty decent show. Although there's sometimes they shoehorn nudity and just because it's HBO and it makes no sense. (laughs) But no commercials either. No commercials either, yeah. But the show was pretty funny. And she played uh, Brian Benben's ex-wife in that. She's great. She always plays kind of an icy... I like it. I dig it. I think that her characters are like awesome. She's really funny and she's a good actress and she has great comic timing. True. Yes. I really like Wendy Malick a lot. She was in one of my favorite episodes of Kate and Alley where she played, uh, which it looks like we'll get to in a moment, but she played um, Alley's husband's new wife. And so uh, Jane Curtin's husband's new ex-husband's new wife. And so she plans a Thanksgiving dinner for everybody. And it somehow, due to a series of unfortunate events, ends up with just her and Wendy Malick. Oh, and everyone perfect. else is stuck. So it's just the two of them. And it's very, very good. That's awesome. Highly recommend it. I'll check that out. All right. Out. So she's on Hot in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. So, like, they always have episodes where somebody from the old show comes back. Oh, and, of course, Betty White is on it. Right, right, she right. She plays Elka. And they... I mean, David Spade has been on it. Um, the dad from Frasier, 
Um, you mean the dad from Say Anything? Sure. Do you ever see Say Anything? <laughs> the same guy? Yeah. He's uh, Ione Sky's dad that commits the fraud and is defrauding the old people. Have you ever seen Say Anything? No. Ooh. Sorry. You should see Say Anything. Okay. It's a classic Cusack. Okay. I would be taking notes, but I'll just listen to them. That's fine. Yeah. That, that works as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's a, I think you'd like it. It's a, The reason I bring it up is because there's several episodes, well, I shouldn't say several, at least two come to mind, where someone's standing on a ledge. Perfect. <laughs> so, is there, so the other big things is either uh, someone holds the whole group hostage, which happened very frequently. Yeah. It happened on Golden Girls in the Christmas episode, actually. Sure did. Uh, or they're trapped in an elevator with someone giving birth. Of course, which happened on The Nanny. It happened on The Nanny, it happened on the Night bell. Court, Saved by the Bell, Facts of Life, mm-hmm. Family Ties. It happened in many, many shows. Yeah. Does it happen on Hot well, Oh, wait. Um, what's that? Uh, Fresh Prince. Yes. Does it happen on Fresh it Prince? It does happen on Fresh yeah. Prince. Yes. Um, did it happen on... What was your question? Did it happen on Hot in Cleveland? Hot in Cleveland, yeah. That's the Not classic. Not that I know of. That's To this day, that's why I will never ride an elevator with a pregnant woman. Won't do it. Will not do it. That's why I don't trust people with neck braces. Because you think they're going to... They're faking. You think they're faking. Faking for a lawsuit. They do teach us in a lot of sitcoms that anyone with a neck brace is a shyster that's yeah. trying to just screw everyone over. And they it's might the, be right. It's the easiest. Yeah. Oh, my neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic. Flash. All right. So uh, I also will mention on Saturday night at 10 o'clock, even though that was not within the parameters of what we're looking at, Spencer for Hire was on, which is the best show from Boston ever. Okay. Highly recommend you watch that. He kills so many people. Wow. He's a, he's a private investigator in Boston. He shot it in Boston. It was the last TV series that regularly shot in Boston, and I pretty much mention it every single podcast. Wait, is that for real? It's yeah. the last one? What about, like, Boston Public? That was they didn't shoot that here. So they would shoot exteriors here for some shows, but Spencer for Hire was completely shot in Boston, full show, Whoa. every episode. It was very expensive, and then the unions actually tried to squeeze him, and the show got canceled because they made it too expensive. Dang. But it's a, it's a good show. Cool. On to Sunday night, 8 o'clock, what do you got? Family Ties. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> uh, also, getting to the end of Family Ties' run here. Yeah. Uh, very, very sad final episode. I was so upset in third grade when the final episode aired that I had to stay home from school the next day. Okay, I was just a couple months old, but... Yeah, what... it could have been upsetting as well. I was probably crying. Yeah. What happened? So, uh, Alex moves away. So that was the last episode. But then at the very last scene, they all came out and like waved to the crowd. And it was this big thing. And I had been watching that show since 1982, since it started. And I was two years old. So as far as I was concerned, this show was on for my whole life. Yeah. So it's very devastating when I went away. No, I have a show like that that we'll talk about later that I have um, that was on for my whole life. But yeah, I love Family Ties. I thought it was a great show. Um, You could, this is a tangent but I would almost like to hear a show that's like all about pilots and finales. Yeah. Well, what, Wouldn't that be cool? Well, TV Land used to do that every New Year's Eve. Oh, On every New Year's idea. Eve, they'd show a last, the, all the last episodes, and New Year's Day would be all first episodes. Oh, my God. That's so great. So it was called First and Last. It was great. They did it every year, and they stopped maybe five years ago, but that what? was really cool. Yeah, they do a whole uh, 24 hours of last episode, so you'd see like 48 different ones. I'm going to write to them. You should write to them. I once wrote to Lifetime Television to say that I really liked that the Golden Girls was on. Oh, nice. And they sent me a mug. A Golden Girls mug or a Lifetime mug? a Lifetime mug. mug. Nice. Yeah, and were you like, does this have a Lifetime guarantee, this mug? <laughs> I still have it. So, so far, so good. I, uh, I used to work at a local TV station, and I have many mugs. I have a Judge Judy mug that's oh, cool. I'm very proud of. And uh, and that that's probably the best mug I got from them, I think. Nice. Uh, but a Lifetime mug is good. Actually, Lifetime used to run, uh, used to air reruns of Spencer for Hire, weirdly. There you and go. the Days and Nights of Molly Dodd, which was a really good show. I've as well. heard of it. I've never seen Pretty it. Pretty good show. I think you'd like that as well. Nice. There's many things I'm telling you to watch here that you'll never ever watch. I will. Fair I, enough. I love watching new shows. Uh, so this particular episode of Family Ties, uh, Alex's surprise support bolsters Mallory's campaign for student body president with a fresh, timely platform, confidence, diet soda, and new drapes. That was the episode. Not the best synopsis I've ever read for that really kind of lets that episode down, which is a better episode than that warrants. To be totally honest, the synopsis of the Golden Girls one, I didn't find so great either. It wouldn't really move you to watch the show if you if Oh, you hadn't. I totally would. But, but there's you, just a lot more happening. With it. There's right. so much happening. They miss episode. out on the subtleties and the the, the onion-like layers yeah. of complexity in the Golden Girls. TV Guide is kind of like smooth. It's like you could watch yeah. it if you want. It's just but the facts. Yeah. 
Take it or leave it. Whatever. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. Yeah, TV Guide does kind of have that attitude. I will also say that uh, one of the best spinoffs that never happened was one called Nick. That was a Family Ties spinoff of I Nick's know Nick. boy, of Mallory's <laughs> boyfriend Nick, played by Scott Valentine, and they just released it in the Family Ties DVD box set of the complete series. The episode of Nick is in there. Oh, it's just it's one extra. episode. Yeah, it was just a pilot that didn't get picked up. It wasn't a backdoor pilot. What um, did you call it? No, backdoor pilots when they sort of introduce characters just to spin them oh, off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He but was Nick he was had a been in the series regardless. for several, yeah, for several seasons. Right. He didn't really. He was. He had a very short-lived movie career. Scott Valentine. He was in a movie called. My my Demon Lover, that was about a guy, it was a comedy, and it was in the wake of Teen Wolf, and it was about a guy that when he got um, aroused, turned into a demon. So he was always trying to have relationships, Isn't but that it was pretty all hard. Guys? <clears throat> pretty much. I think it was a metaphor for just general men in general. Uh, very entertaining, awful movie, My Demon Lover. And then he was in a movie called. To sleep with a vampire, where he plays a vampire and uh, him and this woman just sit in a room and talk all night. All night? Yeah, it was like an indie movie where it's not good. That's the whole movie. That's the is whole them movie. Talking? One room. It's like a bottle episode, but it's Whoa. a movie a called bottle. To Sleep To Sleep with a Vampire with Scott Valentine. Wow. Nick from Family Ties. Weird. I saw a great episode of Family Ties recently. It was season one, and Mallory. <laughs> gets molested, assaulted. I'll say okay. assaulted. Uh, was she dressed like Oliver Hardy? <laughs> no, okay. not in this one. Um, she was at the studio visiting her dad, who yep. worked for PBS. PBS, where there's a lot of uh, very dangerous people. Exactly. And he, they were doing a telethon, Yep. as they do. And she ran into like her dad's friend and he was like oh no oh you're yes up i recall so this fast. one yes the yeah, sleazy like, college buddy hug hug from uncle whatever yeah and he hugs her and it's he like grabs her it's ass creepy. Yeah. and it's super creepy but at this you're like oh that was fucked up maybe just like stay away from him and then he's over at the house and everyone goes in the kitchen and he apologizes to her. He's like, I was... I don't know what that, I was thinking. That yes. Was I remember that one. I'm so sorry if I made you uncomfortable. And she's like, oh my God, I'm glad it was a misunderstanding. And she's yeah. like relieved. And then he... Does it again. Kisses her on the mouth. Yep. And she's like 15 in this yeah, episode. Yeah, 15. Yeah. And yeah. finally she tells her mom and he... That's who you'd tell. Out of the two parents on Family Ties, if you wanted one that you think would kick ass, you'd tell well, Meredith Baxter Bernie. True. She's the one. Absolutely. But first she tells Alex, who is of no help, essentially. Yeah, well, yeah, he's like, basically like, what is your? would you lead him on or something? Yeah. I didn't see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, well, you probably misunderstood. Like, he's not like that. Right. Because, you know. Because he idolizes this guy. Probably. Yeah, and she really should have confided in Skippy. He left Family Ties <laughs> briefly to star in a horror movie called Trick or Treat that is about a haunted record. It's a satanic metal band, like hair oh, metal band. That's hot. And he gets possessed uh, by listening to this record. That sounds like something I would like. You should I check love it out. I hair metal. Oh, you'd really like this. Ozzy Osbourne plays a priest in it. Oh. Uh, Skippy I'm from Family sold. Ties is the main character. Yeah, Trick or Treat, it's called. Have you ever seen Mother Goose's Rock and Rhyme? Yes. Okay. Yes. Shelley seem, Duvall's Mother Goose's you seem Rock, Rock and Rhyme. Remnant. Like, yep. Yeah. I know it. Yeah, I, absolutely. Usually when I bring it up, people get excited, but it, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was. <laughs> I really like Shelley Duvall's um, Fairy Tale Theater. Oh, which I is very good. Seen that. It was on Showtime in the early '80s, and it was also released in a series of videos. And they would reenact sort of famous fairy tales, but with um, popular stars of the day. Oh, so, so just like yeah, yeah, very much like Rock, rock and, and Rhyme. Rhyme. Yeah. So if you liked Rock and Rhyme, uh, you should check out Fairy Tale Theater. That's awesome. I will. Yeah. I loved Mother Goose's Rock and Rhyme, and that had a ton of stars in it. Yeah. I mean, stars, but <laughs> people you recognize. Yeah. There was this song on that that was like uh, Gordon, won't, won't you, you come, come out and play? play? Yeah, That's that was very weird. One of the most. I mean, I've been to the Three Blind Mice. Yeah, I've been to it. You know, I went to Ozfest, and rock and rhyme is still one of the most metal things I have ever seen in my life. Maybe metal bands should put out a rock and rhyme tribute album where they each do a song from rock and rhyme. Yeah, that'd be sick. That would at least sell one copy. Sure. Yeah, buy you. You would purchase that copy. Well, you know, yeah. I'd buy so one at least for sell you. One. Well, thank you. So two <laughs> copies of rock and rhyme heavy metal would come out. Yeah, that was about 94, 93, I want to say. I think it was a Disney Channel production. Yeah. Yeah. Mother sure Goose's Rock and Rhyme. Yeah. Uh, 
Good stuff. So on to 8.30. What do you got? Okay. You're not going to be happy with me. I have nothing else for Sunday. Nothing for Sunday? <laughs> nothing else. Just because you hadn't heard of anything or you didn't want to watch any of these okay, things? Okay. What, what do you got? So at 8.30, you had two real choices. You could watch Married with Children. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, that's right. You're married with Children. Oh, uh, let's just Oh, so you're going to go right with Married with Children. Absolutely. Okay. I... Or the spinoff show from Family Ties, Day by Day. Which had Julia Louis Dreyfus in it, and Courtney Thorne Smith. Okay. And Thora Birch. It was her first role. She was about four years old, and it was about people that were in a daycare center, and they were old college friends of uh, Elise and. Um, oh. Why am I forgetting his first name, Mister, Mister mm. Keaton? Yeah. Um, wow, I can't believe I forgot his first name on the show, Elise. Do you remember what his name is? Not I'm blanking now, tonight. Yeah. It's been a long week. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they they that was a backdoor pilot. They introduced these two people as college buddies of theirs that run a daycare center now. And then they're like, and here's their show about our daycare center. <laughs> and so not a great show. Okay. Um, but, I can totally <clears throat> get on board with Married with Children. So Married with Children you would have gone with. This episode was a repeat from last season. It's Steve and Marcy who plan to add a room onto their house, but Peggy and Al plan what kind of room they'd like it to be. Sort of a boring episode of Marrow Children, I will say, but you were, you were a fan of Marrow Children? Was everybody more a fan of Marcy Darcy than, like, the Steve years? I like Steve. He's actually... Jefferson, I just love so much. Well, he's considered sitcom poison, Ted I, McGinley. Yeah, I used to look at jumptheshark.com. Yes. Yeah, Ted McGinley so came up very that often. Him. That's where I yeah. learned that. I always liked him from Revenge of the Nerds. I was a big fan of Ted McGinley's work in that. Okay. I haven't seen that. You've never seen Revenge of the Nerds? Fun fact, I don't watch movies. Oh, my God. I, you, I'm dead serious. I watch you, television like a fiend. But you got a Netflix Revenge of the Nerds and okay. just pretend like it's three episodes of a TV of a TV show. I'll try. It's great. I just get attached, and I don't want to let characters go. Oh, they're fun characters. They actually tried to make a TV series of Revenge of the Nerds, and it was one of the worst pilots I've ever seen in my life. Oh. Uh, but Ted McGinley played the, uh, the Alpha Beta... Uh, frat boy he was dickhead. Super in that. handsome. Yeah, well, he was a model. He was he's like a model. He's kind of like a Sean William Scott type. Oh, he's better looking than Sean William Scott. <laughs> yeah, but that like douchey hot. Yeah, but Sean William Scott kind of has like a weird wonky face. Oh, really? I he's think got he's like kind of his eyes are a little squinty. I'm into it. You like that? Oh, and yeah. that the scruffy. Mysterious. Yeah, see, Ted McGinley's got the more all American look going on. Yeah. He totally. looks more successful. He looks quarterback. Yeah, he's 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 got the quarterback look going. Definitely. He was on Happy Day. I mean, he was on everything. Love Boat. He ruined everything. everything. Uh, but I liked the guy who played Steve, David Garrison, because he was on a show with Jason Bateman called It's Your Move that I that I enjoyed very much a couple years before. It's Your Move. It's Your Move. Jason Bateman played a jerk, as he generally does, but a teenager. He was like 14, and he lived in an apartment building with his mom and his sister, and the guy lived across the hallway was uh, was David Garrison and his mom was sort of dating this guy and him and Jason Bateman were at sort of war with each other. That's why it was called It's Your Move. Right on. Yeah. <clears throat> so I knew him from that, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I probably prefer him to, to Jefferson. Wow. Okay. But I think most people are on the Jefferson camp. That could easily be because when I was watching the Steve years, I was younger and probably got much... I mean, I probably never got 100% of the jokes, Right. but I got... Fewer, like that probably 25%. makes you a better person not getting 100% of the jokes from Married with Children as a child. I yeah. think that means you had a childhood. You know what's weird? I was never censored as a child. Like, nobody ever said this is too adult for you. Yeah. And the one time it happened, my mom was like, maybe you shouldn't watch Married with Children. It was Married with Children and that I did it. And I was like, well, just watch an episode and then tell me. And she watched it and she's like, I guess it's fine. But it was kind of a sleazy show. It was extremely controversial at the time. There was oh, a absolutely. huge outcry about how filthy this show was. Isn't and that where they got the expression, if you don't like it turn it off. I well, I, that was probably before that, but I think it was applied. <laughs> I don't even there. think that's an yeah. expression. There wasn't. It is now. It is now. Uh, there was an episode that was actually banned. They they shot it and then what it got it? they protested. So it was um, Marcy and Steve and Al and Peggy went away. Oh, on is vacation. this about a videotape? It was a I sex tape episode. This. Yeah, and they never and they aired it. couldn't prove that they had actually had sex because he did it so quickly. Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, it never aired in the U.S. It aired in Europe. Wow. And it was on the DVD set as a lost episode. Did but you it, see it? I, I have seen it. It's, uh, it's, it's not that sleazy. It's no sleazier than most of right. what else was going on at Fox at the time. I think the hugest problem that people had with it was that it was so chauvinistic. The show was pretty hateful. Yes. Generally, it was a fairly hateful like, show. 
and I'm torn because yes, I do consider myself a feminist, and okay. they weren't very kind to women on that show. They were either sex objects or fat and getting made fun of. Or to be but, fair, the show wasn't very kind to anyone. Okay, that's very fair. But then, as a comedian, I have to say those are two of my favorite female characters. Yeah, there's no sacred cows. You kind of can take anything down. I mean. Al and Peggy, that dynamic, like, she was with him, like, punch for punch. She stayed totally... She's the more likable character there. Absolutely. And she's feisty. Yeah. And she... I know that when they were casting... You probably know this. When they were casting her role, they were thinking, like, a Roseanne Barr type. Right. I think they wanted Roseanne Barr and Sam Kinison. That's the couple that I would that not want to have watched that show. Isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thinking back, it's like, you cannot replace these two. That seems like a very unpleasant show. <laughs> yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so when, what's her name? Peggy, the actress. Uh, Katie Seagal. Thank you. When Katie Seagal walked into the audition, she was like vamped up. She had like yeah. her hair done. Oh, she's and her a nails sex pot, done. Katie oh, Seagal. Yeah, yeah, totally. And they're like, oh my god, this woman has no idea she's white trash, and they love that about her. And of course, she got the part. Yeah, she used to date some of the Almond Brothers. She's hot. Yeah, she's, and she's, she's got in a bands. Great voice. Yeah, she was a singer in rock bands for a long time. Yeah, she's cool, and she's on Futurama. Exactly. And of course, Christina Applegate is one of my fashion icons. I have okay. two fashion icons: uh, Fran Drescher on The Nanny, okay, and Christina Applegate on Married with Children. Wow. I if have you seen Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead? Have I? Okay, seen so you've seen. <laughs> so you made an exception to your I don't watch movies rule. By watching Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. She's got some sick outfits in that. She does. Well, she is a fashionista in that exactly. in that movie. So that's yeah. probably the most fashionable, I think, that she ever got. I'm on top of it, Rose. Right yes. on top of it, Rose. Yeah, I love that movie. I love her. And like when I go to the mall, when I go shopping, if I pick something off the rack and I look at it and I'm like, Christina Applegate would wear this. So you do the Christina Applegate test. That's the litmus test Absolutely. if it's Applegate-ish. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, if... Any listeners have seen me at any Christmas parties or Makes anywhere sense. where I'm dressed up. They're like, up. of course, Christina Applegate. That's it. That's Perfect. what she dresses like. So you didn't have anything at 9 o'clock, which is just sad. There's... Well, what do we look? Because now I guess I missed it. So if I was going to go with a sitcom, I would have gone with It's Gary Shandling Show, which was a really great, innovative show. Gary Shandling obviously starred in it. And it was, uh, basically there was no fourth wall. He came out, talked to the audience. He would acknowledge that he was in a sitcom. I he would like acknowledge that there like were that. actors. It was a very cool show. I, it was probably my favorite thing that he's done, and I'm not a huge Gary Shandling fan. We should <laughs> check out this Gary Shandling show. On uh, this particular episode, Gary feels romance in the air during an evening renewal. His acquaintance with an old flame, Ed Ames, provides atmosphere doesn't really tell you too much about it, but it was a good show. Also, at this time, a movie was on called Turk 182, which does star Darren McGavin, who I like quite a bit, and Robert Urich, who was Spencer on Spencer for Hire. It's not the best movie. Uh, it was directed by the guy who directed uh, Christmas Story and Black Sunday, which a uh, little-known movie by him, so you could have gone with that as well. But I think that Gary Shandling show would have been the move there. Okay. And then at 9.30, I probably would have gone with The Week in Rock on MTV, as I was a big fan of that. What's that? The Week in Rock was an MTV news report. So MTV used to have a news show on every day called The Day in Rock. And it was like a roundup of rock (laughs) stories. And then on the weekends, they had The Week in Rock. That was like the best of that week. It was usually hosted by Kurt Loder or Tabitha Soren. That was on at 9.30 on, on MTV on Sunday nights. But also the show Duet was on on Fox, which I probably would have watched, which was sort of like a romantic comedy show that wasn't great, but I watched it every week. For no reason. I probably would have watched Week in Rock. <laughs> Week in Rock yes. was good. That was that was appointment television. The only reason I may not have watched Week in Rock is because MTV at that time had about four shows that they aired 700 times every weekend. So and if, none of them were Teen Mom. None of them were Teen Mom, thankfully, which I have never <laughs> seen and I never hope to see. Oh, you'd love it. I, there's. It's a lot like Family Ties. I don't know about that. Although I imagine there might be gentlemen who look like Nick on it. Well, they're both on TV. So. True. That That is a lot in common that they have there. <laughs> All right. On to Monday night, the saddest night of the week. You've gone back to school. You've gone back to work. And you need something to take you away from the hell. <laughs> what do you go with at 8 o'clock? What cures your case of the Mondays? At 8 o'clock, I put Kate and Allie. 
perfect. It's a really good episode. CBS Monday Nights was where I was at for most of the 80s. It was just two hours of power. You start with Kate and Allie. Now, Alf was on as well, so you're, you're, you're not an Alf person. I've you're, never seen Alf. You've never seen Alf. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I, you know, I could see how Alf would bypass you I if you knew, were born in 88. I knew this was going to come up. Alf was pretty much gone in the 90s. He, he had two cartoon series, which you probably missed out on. I'm sure he had cereal and cartoons and t-shirts and yep. all that Alf was stuff. a phenomenon. What, what was the big... Alf-like phenomenon you can remember from your youth. What do you think the Alf equivalent would have been? Pokemon? Mighty Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Do the Simpsons count? No, the Simpsons would not count. The Simpsons would be too critically acclaimed to count. Oh, so something really dopey that There was just a huge, like California Raisins. Spice Girls? Yeah, maybe the Spice Girls was the equivalent Kind of cheesy, Alf. but everywhere? Yeah. yeah. I, I saw Spice World in the theater. Me too. I was very excited about that. You you had an excuse, though. You were probably, what, seven years old and a girl? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like 17 years old, and I saw it by myself. Oh, my so God. That's, was that you? That was me. Wow. That was me. Uh, so Kate and Allie, in this episode, is this is a weird one. In an episode set in the future, an adult Chip returns with his son to his boyhood home, now being demolished. There, Chip recalls the time he failed science. Really weird show. Flash forward episode, which yeah. Kate and Allie would do sometimes, but a very, very funny, very strange episode. As I said, I'm, I definitely think that would have been the move. You should have gone with Kate and Allie over Ralph. Uh, <laughs> at 8.30, this is a tough call. If this had been a year earlier, I know what it would have gone with. What do you got? I put Designing Women. Perfect. Designing Women. <laughs> as I said, CBS, you got the Kate and Allie, Designing Women, and then we'll get to New Heart. It's like the best it's test ever taken. It's a great night. You're ace in this one. Uh, now, normally I would have watched Valerie, which was on NBC at the time, opposite Designing Women. Who was on Valerie? Valerie was Valerie Harper, Jason Bateman, and they killed Valerie off after the first season. It was called Valerie. It was called Valerie. She wanted more money. She was Rhoda on Rhoda. Of course. Um, it was, she was also a, a Second more. City. Uh, she was one of the original Second City people. Get out. Um, uh, with Alan Arkin, I think she was in Second City with. But um, Good for her. She was in Valerie. She wanted more money. They killed her character. They killed her and replaced her with Sandy Duncan and changed the show's name to Valerie's Family <laughs> and then the Hogan Family. Oh, and so, I know the Hogan yeah, Family. Yeah, same show, same show. So I I went at the beginning, of the end of the spring, went away, loving Valerie. Over the summer, they fire her. First episode of the fall, where is Valerie? Two minutes in the episode, she's not there. And then Jason Bateman mentions that she died in a car crash. Oof. Devastating. Devastating. Wow. When I worked at a local TV station, I met her. She came in to uh, promote something. She was very nice. I like. I, I was basically I had to like assist her all day, talking to her about um, this movie Freebie and the Bean, about uh, Mary Tyler Moore. She was super nice. And then by the end of the day, I start bringing up Valerie, and I realize that I'm welling up now because <laughs> it was so upsetting. And she just hugs me. Oh my god! And gosh. it was the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Worse than seeing Spice Girls in theaters? Yes, far worse, far worse. Were you alone when you saw Spice Girls? Yeah, I was, yeah. yeah. So. That would have been, I think that's less embarrassing than if I was like on a date or something. That would probably would have been worse. No one to witness you? Yeah, yeah. I went on like a Tuesday morning. I think I was, I, I literally think I was the only one in the theater. I love Valerie Harper. That's a She's really good She's very story. funny. She was super nice. And the first season of that show was great. And then once Sandy Duncan came in, it got awful. Oh, this so sucks. this was in the Sandy Duncan era. Definitely Designing Women. I'm a huge Delta Valerie, Burke fan. Valerie Harper was on the episode of Hot and Cleveland that I saw live. Oh, nice. So you it, saw her in person as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Small World. Yeah. Um, and that was the Mary Tyler Moore Show reunion show. Right. Okay. So it was all of them. It was Mary Tyler. Taylor Moore and Cloris Leachman and Georgia Engel and yep. Valerie Harper. Just the women from Mary Tyler's Moore? Yeah, Mary yeah. I think all the... No, Ed Asner's alive. Yeah. But every, all the other guys are dead? I think so. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's all the women it and yes. they were phenomenal. I yeah. mean, that's like... That's gold to a young woman pursuing comedy. To see like, all them in one room at it, live is pretty cool. It's very emotional. It was very sensitive. Did you cry? Tears streaming down understandable my face. see that's more justifiable than the than my tears when i was recounting her character's death on, on I Valerie. i don't think so it's emotional uh, i don't know i you don't know, know. It pulls at your heartstrings i was alone in a betty white t-shirt crying 25 years old crying 
that see that seems fine to me. Okay. That seems less embarrassing than than alone seeing Spice World at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday. But you weren't crying. In well, the I theater. didn't. You didn't ask me that. <laughs> I didn't. Um, <laughs> So, designing women that night, uh, a redecorating job on a cruise ship finds Mary Jo and Suzanne wagering on who will show up with the most eligible man at the captain's dinner. Uh, pretty good episode. I don't normally like things set on boats, but it's a pretty good episode. I'm a big Delta Burke fan. I do have her autobiography up here on my oh, wall of celebrity autobiographies. It is very good. Oh, we yeah. should talk about celebrity bi- autobiographies. Yes, I have many. Mine have are many. all, like, rockers and... Do you like girl, the you like the you like the hair metal? Yeah, I'm reading okay. Bobby Brown's right now. You know Cherry yes, Pie? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Not not the Boston Bobby Brown. Not the makeup artist Bobby Brown. Not the Whitney Houston. Not Bobby the Whitney Brown. Houston Bobby Brown. Is that the same Boston? That's that the Boston Bobby <laughs> Brown. Yes, uh, yes. The Cherry Pie yeah. Bobby Brown's book. I have to imagine not an interesting book. There's parts that I'm laughing out loud. At her or with her? With. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely with. She's interesting. funny. I'll loan it to you if you're interested. Actually, Natalie bought it for me for my oh, birthday. Oh, nice, nice. A friend, uh, the, a mutual friend that we have purchased yeah. that book. Uh, nine o'clock. I think there's only one move here. Let's see if you made it. What'd you get? I didn't put anything. Nothing. No, but but New Heart's right here. No, I never. I don't even know what New Heart is. What? Yeah. Do you know who New Heart is? No. You don't know Bob New Heart? Oh, well, the name sounds familiar. Okay, Bob Newhart. Uh, you may know him from the Bob Newhart Show, produced by MTM Productions, which was Mary Tyler Moore's production company. Uh, it was very famous in the 70s, and he had a show in the 80s called Newhart, where he played a guy named Dick Hartley. Okay. Who, um, I'm sorry, Dick La- Loudon. He was Dr. Hartley on Bob Newhart Show. Dick Loudon owns a New York guy. He's a writer. He writes how-to books, and he buys a bed and breakfast in Vermont. Great show. New Heart is amazing. Maybe my favorite sitcom of the 80s. Wow, no kidding. New Heart is really, really good. And this episode's excellent. It has, uh, Julia Duffy was also in it. Do you like Julia Duffy? She was on uh, Designing Women the last, second to last season. Uh, she's very funny. I have a confession to make. I have only seen one episode of Designing Women. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because I felt like it was a betrayal. No, it's a really good show. You felt like Designing Women was a betrayal? To Golden Girls. No, it has nothing to do with Golden Girls. Weren't they kind of at competition? I mean, no. shows about women for women? No, they were sure? on completely different nights. They were very, very different shows. Okay. Designing Women and Golden Girls are couldn't be less like, alike. Should I be watching Golden Girls right now? You can watch more shows about women than just one. You don't have to, you don't have to choose. You can have just, them all. It makes me cry. No, no. Designing Women, you're missing out. Okay. Missing out I have seen women. one episode because uh, a particular episode was recommended by my friend Ken Reed. Okay. And it was where one of their friends has AIDS. Oh, you watched the AIDS episode. I did. Yes. I was sick yes. and in bed and just like, I just feel like watching special episodes about today. About AIDS, yeah. Yes. And I recommended that and you watch you the AIDS episode. And it was great. It's a fairly respectful handling of AIDS. I thought it was a, before its time. Yeah. I thought it was mature, and I thought it was sensitive, and I really liked it It's a, a lot. really good episode. That was that's pretty representative of how good that show was. Good. It was a very smart, well-written show. It had an amazing ensemble cast. Because if you look at the Mr. Belvedere AIDS episode from the year before and compare the two, it's uh, night and day. Yeah. Also, I have a lot of respect for Delta Burke. I think she's... You she's know. really funny. Yeah. She's, she's like a in- hotter Katy Perry. Oh. <laughs> when she was younger, she looked like a Katy Perry who did doesn't she, have a goofy face. Did she also look like Zoe Deschanel? Uh, Katy Perry and A much Zoe prettier look. Zoe Deschanel. Exactly. Delta like, Burke. Um, yeah, I think she's awesome. And, like, you know, she struggled with her weight, which, you know, is something I plan on doing in the future. Excellent. As, as we all do. And... I just think she's like super classy and. You should sweet. read her book. She's she's very good. She's great on design. You have to watch this anime for Delta Burke. She's, okay. she's very very funny. I'll watch it. more. I promise. But back to the issue of you never having heard <laughs> of Newhart. No, let's uh, talk more about books. This particular episode also had a guest appearance by one of my favorite people, Julie Brown. I don't know if you know downtown her. Downtown Julie Not Brown? Not downtown Julie Brown, regular Julie Brown, who hosted a show on MTV called Just Say Julie. She wrote and starred in the movie Earth Girls Are Easy. There were two Julie Browns. There were two Julie Browns. <laughs> there were two Julie Browns. Why they let that happen? This Julie Brown started as a sort of stand-up comedian that used to do songs like The Homecoming Queen's Got a Gun. She put out a great album called Trapped in the Body of a White Girl that's very funny. Oh, man. Uh, you should check out Julie Brown. She's, she's sure. very good. She still does stuff with the Groundlings. She's great. So she's in this episode. She doesn't have a... Small guitar or ukulele? No, okay. no, no. Think of someone else. She was, you know, did you ever see Clueless? Yeah, of course. She was the coach. 
the redheaded coach. Awesome. That's Julie Brown. Awesome. She's in the movie and the TV show. I love the movie Clueless. Yes, that's Julie Brown. Okay, sorry. Spice World, Clueless. So 96, Kill the 97. Yeah. Don't tell yeah. mom the babysitter. Kill the babysitter is a different, <laughs> I think you're thinking of the movie Halloween. Oh. Uh, also known as Kill the Babysitter. Never seen Halloween. So Newhart, this is a great episode. Buffy Denver, played by Julie Brown. Dick's effervescent, effervescent former co-host discovers that she and Stephanie bubble in sync. So, uh... It won't make any sense to you if you've never seen the show, but it's it's a great show. The New Heart Designing Women, Kate and Allie, 90 Minutes was just pure gold. Great. I, I'm sad that you've never seen these, but also somewhat excited to be the person who tells you about them. Aww. Because uh, they're great shows. Now, 9.30, this was always a tough spot because CBS... We're still on Monday. We're still on okay. Monday. <laughs> we're only on Monday. Sorry, I get lost. I'm going to start making check marks. We're only on Monday. Uh, 9.30 was a tough spot on CBS. They never really found a show that worked in this slot until Murphy Brown... They showed a show called, oh. yeah, which was great. But this year in 88, they had a show short-lived called Eisenhower and Lutz. That starred Scott Bakula, who you might know from Quantum Leap, and Patricia Richardson, who was the mother on Home Improvement. Great. And this show was two bombshells, one brunette and one blonde, vie for Bud's company on the same evening. And when Bud, played by Scott Bakula, sets up the brunette with an old army buddy, he doesn't plan on their hitting it off quite so well. Not a great show. Didn't miss out on anything there. Okay. I would not recommend watching it. The only move, I think, at this time would have been to watch a rerun of the Donna Reed show on Nick at Night. That really would have been the only thing to watch at 9.30 on Monday. I did love Murphy Brown. Murphy Brown was great. Everybody I saw loved that. Brown. So you at least saw that. Yeah. I wrote a paper in college about why they don't discuss abortion on sitcoms in the 80s. Was, it just, was it just like, it makes people uncomfortable? End of argument. It was 20 pages long. Okay. And Murphy Brown was a huge, enormous chunk of it because she had that unbelievable episode. I think it was maybe a season, two-part episode. I don't know. It was like a chunk of it. There was a big plot of Roseanne about abortion as well. Yes. I included that in mine as well because of her grandmother getting an abortion, I believe. Yes, yes. And, yeah, Murphy Brown was, like, the best. She was really... That was she a great paved show. the way in a lot of ways, and um, she had it out with Dan Quayle. Yes, yes. He referred to her as though she was a real person. Dan Quayle was not a very smart man. He, he was. He was the vice president of the United States somehow for in the dark times. You're lucky you were very young at that time. Yeah. <laughs> you did I was not miss anything. Concerned with other things. Uh, so at eight o'clock Tuesday night, this one was a tough one. There's some good movies on at this time. Uh, what'd you go with? Who's the boss? Okay. Now, Who's the Boss was a show that I watched every week. I hate Tony Danza. <laughs> I really liked Alyssa Milano. I did. I can't say I liked the show, did but I watched it. Did you have a crush on Alyssa Everybody Milano? did. Okay. We all did. Uh, some of us still might. But uh, I would have gone with a movie this night. And so one movie that was on, they showed The Dark Crystal. And also Critters was on at this time, which are both great movies. I think I would have gone, or Creepshow 2 was also on. So we got two horror movies and a terrifying children's movie. I'm going to go with those instead of Who's the Boss. But I respect the fact that you've chosen Who's the Boss. Thanks. It was a weird, there was a weird subgenre of television shows that were all came out at the same time that people referred to as Manny sitcoms. So we had Charles in Charge, Who's the Boss, Mr. Belvedere, sort of all came out the same year. It was, I don't know what was in the water at that time. I liked Charles in Charge too. Charles in Charge was all right. I, did you prefer the Powells or the Pembrokes? I don't even know what that question is. So the, I, I envy you not knowing what that question means. <laughs> uh, so Charles in charge the first season. He was uh, the Manny for a family called the Pembrokes. And it was on CBS, I believe. It got canceled after one season. They waited a year and then brought it back in syndication with a different, with a oh, different family, okay. the, the Powells, which was Nicole Eggert. Yeah. yeah. She was on Celebrity Fit Club, too. Yeah, she was. And she was on Baywatch. And I think she was on Splash last season, too, where they was just the celebrities yeah, diving. Yeah, with Kendra Wilkinson. Uh, 8.30, there's only two things on. I assume you went with Perfect Strangers. I did go with Perfect Strangers. Yeah, your only other choice was Mr. Ed, so I'm guessing you would have gone with Perfect Strangers. I... Put a I put down Mr. Ed. He got a um You got an honorable mention. Honorable mention. But this is a classic episode of Perfect Strangers. This is the Bibby Bobka episode. I don't know if you're familiar with the Bibby Bobka episode, but in it, uh, I'll read the synopsis, but I could do it from memory. Okay. Balky introduces Larry to a Meepopian, Meeposian, I don't know how you'd exactly say it, a dessert called a Bibby Bobka, and they decide to try and make these to make money. 
and it uh, features the Bibby Bobka dance. Wow. Yeah, it's a very... That's it huge. Says, Larry has no trouble finding a market for Balky's delicious Maposian dessert, but mass-producing it is a different story. And weirdly, they never mention it's called Bibby Bobkas. I think if they did in the synopsis, they would have got a lot better ratings, but that's just me. Huh. That's just me. Maybe they didn't want to give it away. They but probably that's did. that's TV Guide for you, huh? Just, yeah, I mean, they don't. They just want to tell you just enough. They just don't enough. care what you do with your life. No. Um, I liked Perfect Strangers growing up. I used to watch it and maybe not get all the jokes, but... Yeah, or they might just not have been jokes. Oh, that <laughs> Sometimes be. that show, that not could. great. And then Bronson, help me Bronson out. Bronson Pinchot. Yes. Yes. He was on The Surreal Life. Yes. Uh, a great season. I remember Peppa was on it, and I believe Janice Dickinson. Maybe yes, been on Janice that? Dickinson. Yes. Yeah. That was not my favorite season of The Surreal Life. I think my favorite season was. Oh, I'm was so excited to hear what your favorite season was. Jordan Knight. Oh, wow. Charo, Dave Coulier. Dave Coulier. Flava Flav. Brigitte Nielsen. Flavor Flav. That and was. Ryan Starr. Ryan Starr. From American Idol. Right. That was a good one. Okay, my favorite. That was season three. Mine was okay. season two. Which is actually really surprising because C.C. DeVille from Poison was on it. Yes, who wrote the song, I Hate Every Bone in Your Body But, but mine. mine. Exactly. And he also wrote Talk Dirty to Me. True. Uh, he was on season five, I think. And Vince Neil from Motley Crue was on season one. Okay. Also a really great season. But season two had Ron Jeremy and Tammy Baker. Is that her name? Tammy, Tammy Faye, Faye Baker. Baker. May she rest in peace. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Her relationship with Ron Jeremy was hilarious. Yeah, that's a, that's a very different pair of people. That, Although they look somewhat similar. Right. <laughs> but they had such a, lo- like, a friendship. Yeah, well, they're roughly in the same age group and body yeah. shape. Yeah, and Vanilla Ice was on it, and he was so bitter. Rob Van Winkle. Yeah. What a prick that guy is. Have you, you have you, you're I, talking like you met him. I don't need to meet him. No. What a piece of shit. Wow. That guy have you seen his home improvement show that he has? No. He de- he like flips houses. Okay. Uh, in Florida. It's the worst. Weird. It's the worst. Was um, what's his name? Uh, Sebastian Bach ever on the Surreal Life? No, but he was on Gilmore Girls. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? Uh, Supergroup. Oh, Supergroup. Yes, yeah. Yes. That's the Sebastian dude Bach. from um. Anthrax and John Bonham's son. Oh, weird. I'm thinking of two different shows right now. Evan Seinfeld. There's one that's like. Man group that's like some guy from NSYNC. Oh, some... oh, it's like a boy band, but it's like a man band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, this was like a heavy metal super group. Yeah, I remember Sebastian Bach on that f- being a psycho, like yeah. flipping out for no reason. Well, at he's all. a weird dude in that he he wasn't the first singer for Skid Row, and he was signed by the label when he was like seventeen. He's really pretty. And then they, but he was really young, yeah. and they were trying to just find a group for him, and so they kind of stuck him in Skid Row, yeah. who were like an established band already, and he basically <laughs> never had a real job. Him in yeah, there. which they used to do that a lot, and he was he's basically been a rock star since he was seventeen years old, and he has a son. He's like he has a son that's like eighteen. Makes sense. Because he had him when he was like 17 years yeah. old. Yeah. There's an episode of Supergroup where they're watching his episode of Gilmore Girls. Ah, uh, nice. And he's like, shh, 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 it's on. Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah. Like the other guys are like, we don't want to watch Gilmore Girls. Yeah, his brain never really moved on from being 17 years old. I, I guess not. He's yeah. in Bobby Brown's book, too. Of course he is. I bet yeah. a lot of people are in that. Briefly. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so we moved to 9 o'clock on Tuesday night. What do you got? Uh, right. I have nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. You should have gone with Moonlighting. I don't know what that is. Oh, dear God. Dear God. Moonlighting is what made Bruce Willis famous. Okay. Do you know who Bruce Willis is? <laughs> yes! Okay. This was Sybil Shepherd. He was on Friends. Do you know Sybil Shepherd? Yeah. She she wrote a great book called Civil Disobedience, which if you like entertainment an autobiographies, you should definitely read that. Oh, she yeah. dated Elvis. There's some great stuff in that book. Whoa. Um, and she is nuts. Uh, did you watch Sybil? I watched episodes of Sybil. Sybil was never great. Watched, like the whole. I had a huge thing for Alicia Witt, who was the daughter on Sybil from Massachusetts. She was she also in Dune. Else? Um, she was in the movie Dune. She was on Twin Peaks. She was in Urban Legend. Um, she, I think she dates Ben Folds. They've oh. done some music together. She puts out albums now. Is Brick about her? I don't think Brick is about her. Back to, uh, back to abortion talk. Uh, <laughs> or Christmas songs. It could be uh, considered a very bad Christmas song. Uh, but Moonlighting was a great show. So it was Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepard. They, uh, ran a private detective agency. It was very innovative, very funny. One of the best written shows of the 80s. Cool. Cannot recommend Moonlighting enough. Great okay. episode. And this particular episode also uh, has a guest appearance by Mark Harmon. 
who's great, was voted People Magazine Sexiest Man Alive 1987. Wow. He's on CSI now. Oh, no, NCIS. Mark Harmon is on now. He's got gray hair. He's a little I'm, old. I'm a law and orderist for you. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so 9.30, I'm assuming you had nothing? Nothing. You probably should have gone with Donna Reed, but if you went with new Moonlighting, it would have been the whole hour. It would have been fine. Okay. On to Wednesday. I didn't know. Is omitting an option? I, Not really. So I should have. You probably should have just picked something, <laughs> but it sounds like, you know, you just, it was, you just couldn't. No, so sometimes was, in didn't school, know. like if I didn't know the answer, I just put nothing. And they're like, you should guess. Just yeah, always put guess. Always guess. When in doubt, guess. Yeah. Eight o'clock, Wednesday. What do you go with? Also, I feel like next time we do this, if there is a next time, I'd like it. We should have a penny jar. And every time we mention like a VH1 show for Reality like, show. Recently, we have to put some money yeah. in the jar. Yeah, we'd make VH1 so much money. Up, we really would. VH1's come up quite Celebrity a bit here. Fit Club, yep. so real life. Okay. So Wednesday night, 8 p.m., I put down Growing Pains. Yes, I think that's the right move here. <laughs> uh, this was in my favorite seasons of Growing Pains was season three and four. So like 87 to 89. This is when just the 10 of us spun off from Growing Pains. This particular episode is a really weird, surreal one as well. Uh, in the hospital for a tonsillectomy. To me, Ben dreams of an escape with a friendly cabbie, played by Alan Hale, who was the skipper on Gilligan's oh, Island, awesome. uh, only to find he's been replaced at home by a new Ben, played by Danny Cooksey, who is Budnick on Salute Your Shorts. If Got you still it. watch that, he's also in Terminator 2 yeah, and I on did Different watch Strokes. Salute Your Shorts. Um, and so lips. it was a very weird show. They basically very fourth wall breaking they tell him that they are it's a TV show because he's having a hallucinogenic nightmare while he's having his tonsils out that kind of sounds like an episode that would be on Blossom yeah it does sound Blossom-ish yeah. there was a lot of tonsillectomies in episodes uh, yeah. of sitcoms Punky Brewster had an infamous one uh, that <laughs> happened I, I didn't know one person who had their tonsils out not a single person growing up interesting I feel like I, if I ever did, I'd be like, you can eat all the ice cream you want. That's what they went with mostly yeah. on that. Yeah. And I can eat all the ice cream I want now and still have all my body. True. Is that a shitty thing to say because you can't eat ice cream? Or is that genuine? I could never No, no, I don't think they're sarcastic. being sarcastic. I don't think if a doctor removed their tonsils were like, yeah, you can eat all the ice cream you want. I'm just kidding. Ah, you can't. I, I never knew if that was Yeah, like, I think it was because you're in pain, so you want to have something smooth and cold. I thought it was you can eat all the ice cream that you can, Which is but none. the trick is it's none. That's, that would be very cruel. That's, that's a very glass half empty way to look at a tonsillectomy. What happened in my life to make me think that that was yeah, something that, that medical did? doctors would be like, if you've gotten a car accident, and you're in a wheelchair, they're like, you can walk all the miles you want, which is none. <laughs> yeah, that would be very, very cruel. You can wear all the shoes you want, which are none because you got no feet left. Like that would be, that'd be bad medicine. You got no feet left. Yes. The Bon Jovi song, bad medicine. <laughs> uh, so 830, I'm going to guess that you picked nothing. No. You went with head of the class. No, I didn't. You went with Mr. Ed. I did go with Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. Ed. <laughs> okay. So do you know head of the class at all? Is head of the class something I'm getting confused with Mr. Carter? Hanging with Mr. Cooper. No. Mr. Carter? It was with John Travolta and Horshack. Oh, yes. That's Welcome Back Cotter. <laughs> yes. Welcome Back Cotter. I think it's Cotter. because my... Some folks in my family had Boston accents okay. growing up. So they so called I them would, Carter? I would, no, I would translate it to, I would put R's in words that didn't need them. Oh, good. Because you, so often, you R's over, were taken out of You words. over R'd the pudding. It, yeah. Yes. Like, like souvenir instead of souvenir. Okay. Like I would put too many R's in words. That's, if you gotten over that? Obviously not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yeah, I, I Hopefully hate... Hopefully it's endearing. And it not... may be. It may be. But if people can understand you. <laughs> well, you got a really it. really weird speech impediment. There's <laughs> all these extra R's in there. It's very strange. I hated Welcome Back, Cotter Did so you? much. Yes. It was, I hated that show. I still have tried to rewatch it because people love it and everyone has these fond memories of it. I cannot stomach it. Then then you don't watch it, Ken. I, I don't have to. You That's have I'm an to. adult and I don't have to watch it if I don't want to. You don't have to, to like it. Uh, but Head of the Class was, was a different it took place in New York City, much like uh, Welcome Back, Cotter. It was about a class for gifted students called the IHP, and they it was a history class, and they got to kind of do whatever they wanted in the class. And it was their teacher was Howard Hessman, who was on WKRP in Cincinnati. Did you ever see that? No. Uh, he was like the cool teacher. Mr. Moore. Robin Givens was in it. It was married to Mike Tyson for a while. Oh, I liked her. Wait, she yes. was on something else that I liked. Did she have her own talk show? 
Robin Givens, she may have. Like uh, there a was Sally a, Jesse. There was show? a short period in the mid to late nineties where everybody had a talk show. I think and she, she may did. have had one. I wouldn't be surprised. Tempest Bledsoe had one. Did she? Who played the Cosby daughter whose name I can't remember for some reason. Uh yeah, and also this show is where uh we had Dennis, who was played by the man who produces Wait, was it Cassandra? Cassandra, no. What would no, Sandra's Sandra's the oldest daughter on Sandra. Sandra's the oldest daughter on. Is that Cosby who we're show. trying to think of? No, it's Sandra, <laughs> and then there's Lisa Bonet, and there's oh, Rudy. Oh, I totally okay. I was picturing the oldest one. Yeah, okay. not the oldest one who has the same name as Shia LaBeouf. Her name's like Shannon LaBeouf. Oh, weird. It's very very similar to Shia LaBeouf's name. <laughs> Even Steve. Yes, uh, but the guy who played uh, Dennis Blunden on Head of the Class is now the architect of every show on Nickelodeon. Oh. Dan Schneider. He produces pretty much oh, every single scene. Yeah, he created iCarly. He created uh, everything Amanda Bynes ever done. He created all that. He's sort of every single sitcom Whoa, on Nickelodeon. So forever created. and ever, huh? Yes, yeah. He's very well off wow. at this point. But that was a fun show. Good for him. I would recommend that show. Nine o'clock, what'd you go with? I don't have anything else. Days and Nights of Molly Dodd was on, which was a really good show. It was like a dramedy. It was canceled after one season, but then picked up by Lifetime. Oh. Uh, you also could have gone with Hooper Man, which is probably what I would have gone with. It's like John Ritter from Three's I love Company. John Ritter. He was uh, a, a news reporter, and it was uh, took place in San Francisco. It was him and a dog. It was a very, very good show. Hooper Man, good stuff. Right on. 9.30. Did you pick nothing? I picked nothing. You had two choices here. You had the Slap Maxwell story. I have no idea. What this that was is. Dabney Coleman's second failed sitcom, which for some reason's come up, I think, on every single podcast. <laughs> or Sarah, which was a very short lived show that starred uh, Gina Davis. Oh, I like Gina Davis. And Bronson Pinchot oh, and like Bill Maher. And it was produced by Gary David Goldberg, who, who did Family Ties. Wow. Uh, it's Gina Davis plays Sarah McKenna, a lawyer living the single life in San Francisco in the series from 1985. I don't know why they re aired this episode in 1988, but it only lasted about uh, eight episodes. Oof. Uh, it wasn't great. Uh, Gina Davis was also on Family Ties for a few episodes as well. She's in Earth Girls Are Easy with regular Julie Brown. Wow, there you go. It's a good movie. Uh, I have seen A League of Their Own, and I do okay. like that movie. Okay, that is a good movie. Gina Davis is good So we're up that. to four movies. Gina Davis from Massachusetts. She's no from kidding. Cape Cod. She oh, was nice. an Olympic archer. Mm. She's also, I think, almost six feet tall. Wow. Yep, she's a former model. She's cool. Uh, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, what do you got? Cosby Show. Cosby Show. Uh, it's the right move. Vanessa. That's the name. That's the name oh, that Vanessa, I'm trying to think of. Oh, Vanessa, way to go. Tempest was it, was it right Vanessa. there? It's not. It's not. Oh, but I looked at Cosby Show and I remembered it was Vanessa. Good for and you. In this episode, Cliff is sure that Claire's entry in a squash growing contest can't lose. <laughs> That's what the episode's about. A squash growing contest. I'm sure it's very entertaining. Now, normally I would have watched Cosby, but again, we're into the summer months here. We're on June 2nd, 1988. It was a repeat. So I would have watched... Summer Rental with John Candy at 7 o'clock, at 8 o'clock. Great movie. I'm assuming you've never seen it. No. Is that the one about his, he has to babysit some kids at Christmas? Summer Rental? Okay, so maybe no. <laughs> no, you're thinking of Uncle Buck. Yeah. Yeah, which was a TV series as well starring Kevin Meany, Boston comedian Kevin Meany, played the John Candy role. <laughs> uh, but no, Summer Rental is him and his family go to Myrtle Beach for the summer. Uh, he's a, a air traffic controller. He's stressed out, so they send him on vacation. It's a great movie. I saw that. It came out in 1985. Carl Reiner directed oh, it. Oh, I love Carl Reiner. Uh, he also directed uh, Mark Harmon movie. I love movie. most of the Reiners. Yeah, most of the Reiners are good. Uh, but in Summer Rental, there's a scene, and I've, I've told this on stage before, but I saw it in Narragansett. I used to spend my summers in Narragansett Rhode Island with my family. And I went to go see Summer Rental, and there's a scene where their neighbor got a boob job, and she's showing everybody. And then she's like, oh, look at them. And then they shoot her from the back, so you don't see anything. But in the theater... On that scene, it's a PG-13 movie. My aunt Helen covered my eyes and yelled, "No fucking way!" <laughs> at full volume while I was five years old, which was clearly less damaging than if I had seen, you know, a woman's back in a movie. Right. But summer rentals. She great. wanted to visually protect Just, you well. I don't want to see that. Audibly. Yes. Yes. Swearing, fine. Uh, implied breasts. Forget it. Nl. Yes. Eight thirty. Fuck no. Exactly. Eight thirty. Mister Ed again. Uh, no, I have nothing. Nothing? You didn't go a different world? The Cosby spinoff series? 
No. You never, never watched Different seen World. It, but I've heard of it. Different World was great. It was a spin-off of Cosby. It was Lisa Bonet went away to college, the fictional Hellman College. Uh, it was a very good show. I liked Cosby's show. I liked the episode where um what's the son's name? Theo. 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 Malcolm Thank you. Jamal Warner. There you go. He had dyslexia. Yes. Um, and it's not the episode where they find out, but an episode where he becomes a teacher and he suspects that one of his students has dyslexia. Because he had it. That's a small plot in the movie Summer School, directed by Carl Reiner. Wow. And starring Mark Harmon. Oh my goodness. So many connections. Uh, there's a scene where he draws like two circles and like a line on the chalkboard and the kid's like, I don't get it. He goes, this is how you're going through life. And this is how you can be going through life. And like... He draws more lines, and it turns out it's a bicycle. It's a picture of a okay. bicycle. Because you're not seeing the full picture. And he says, you're going through life with a flashlight. And did you find this inspirational? I remember. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, I saw it when I was, gosh, I don't know, tiny. I mean, small. But I remember that so yeah. vividly. Well, Theo's a like, good teacher. It was inspirational. That's I, the word for it. I remember when Theo met uh, Stevie Wonder. Okay. And said, jam it on the one. Because so Stevie, <laughs> they go into the studio with Stevie Wonder, and he's like teaching them how this keyboard works, and he's sampling things they say. And oh. he's like, oh, Theo, what do you say to a girl at a party? And he's like, jam it on the one. Jamming and I still have no idea mean? what that means. I'll never know what it Jamming means. Jamming on the one. Maybe it, it's uh, actually a bicycle, and I couldn't see the whole picture of wow. jamming on the one. Wow. You're I going through life it. with a flashlight. Yep, I'm, I'll never be jamming on the one. That's a good episode. Also, there's an episode where I think it's Rudy gets her period. And Rudy? She, no, it's got to be Vanessa. No, I don't think so. It's this is late. Later, yeah, where um, Raven Simone's already. Oh, uh, okay. They've replaced the cute, cute quotient with Raven Simone. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, she was adorable. She was absolutely adorable. I think Rudy was a little bit cuter. No, no. Really? I liked Rudy, but Raven Simone was just like oh, I pure cute. Rudy's eyes took up half her face. Yeah. They were so cute. But she gets her period, and then she wants to talk to her mom about it. He's like, you'd rather talk to a lawyer than a gynecologist. Yeah. It was very funny. Wouldn't we all? Right. I mean, if you were at a party, and they're like, <laughs> let me introduce you to my lawyer friend or my gynecologist friend. I'm going to be over here. You're going to be there with the lawyer. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, Nine o'clock. Cheers? Cheers! Yeah, I thought you'd go with Cheers. So you've at least heard of Cheers. Oh, please. Come on. Uh, yes. I mean, who I've, doesn't know Cheers? I've eaten at Cheers. The real Cheers or the fake Cheers? Well, Faneuil Hall. That's the fake Cheers. <laughs> I think I ate once at the real Cheers. Like, yeah. Just nachos, but... Yeah, well, that's all you want to get there. I wouldn't recommend anything else other than so nachos. Expensive. It really is. Uh, cheers, great show. I love Cheers. Always good. Endearing, great show. Kirstie Alley has a new show on TV Called Kirstie. Called Kirstie she's with in, Michael Richards. She's in the movie Summer School with Mark Harmon directed what by... What the hell? And Summer School was written by Jeff Franklin, who created Full House. So yeah, what I'm trying to say school. is you should probably really watch full, uh, Summer School. I wish I'd been taking notes, but this is, like, good. Yeah, I'm I'll gonna... send you, uh, I'll get someone to uh, to do a transcript of this, and then, and then you can that just write down what you want, yeah. Appreciate I'll send it to a transcription service. I'll send it down to the secretarial pool. And, and I will send them an edible arrangement. There you go, there you them. go. Really, all arrangements are probably edible. Mm. I always thought it was weird. Like, you could probably eat most flowers. Yeah, but these are covered in chocolate. Right. I mean, they're intended to be, but, like, edible's not really the best Oh, I see what you're, Like, you want to hear, like, delicious. Yeah, or like, yeah, like, chocolate fruit arrangement's better than edible. Yeah. Like, I've never described anything good as edible. Like, how was your dinner? I wouldn't be like, it was edible isn't going to be a compliment. I think because typically they're not edible, but, like you said, they could be. They could be. be. I mean, I don't think they're designed to be. Hmm. It seems like they're undershooting that descriptor. There are a bunch of bozos working there. I'm surprised that's I have an ex-boyfriend who used to work at an edible arrangement. I was like, oh, okay, so anyone can work here. Yeah, that was the bar set very low. I'm yeah. surprised that company works. I, I'll never the understand The bar it. was set at edible. So it's an edible bar. Yeah, he can, it's, he can put it together. Right, right. He can put fruits on sticks. He can answer the phone. Nice, yeah. nice. That seems more skilled. Uh, 9.30, what'd you go with? I didn't put anything. Nothing? <laughs> But Night Court is on. Rule. But Night Court is on. You never watched Night Court? Never watched it. You've never seen it? Here's what I think it is. Okay. I think it's a naked gun type show about a courtroom. Um, you're wrong. Okay. But you're Doesn't not. That sound good though. You're, that does sound pretty good. You're not completely wrong. So by the last few seasons of Night Court, it did get pretty silly, and there were sort of naked gun ish 
jokes like in there shticky. at times. Yeah, it did get sort of sticky. So you're not completely wrong. But Night Court started as a fairly serious sort of comedy drama at points. Uh, it was a Harry Anderson vehicle you may know from Dave's World. It was from the 90s show he was in with Shadow Stevens. Uh, John Larroquette. You know John Larroquette? <clears throat> He's on Almost Human now. He was in Chuck. Chuck. He's in the movie uh, Madhouse with Kirstie Alley. Sorry. Ah. Well, anyway, Night Court was a great, great show. John Larroquette won, had the record, and he still may have the record, for the most Emmys for a comedy series. No he way. won every single year a Night Court was on, and he had to ask them to stop nominating him. What? Because he yes. didn't want to go anymore? Well, he was just like, I have enough. I don't need any more of these Emmys. I guess it does take up a lot of space. He was very good in it. He had a great show called The John Larroquette Show imaginably named that was very dark it was on for two seasons after night court ended he a played comedy uh, it was sort of a comedy he played a recovering alcoholic a very successful guy whose life was ruined by booze who now the only job he could get was as the manager the night manager of a bus station and there were like prostitutes and just sad people lenny oh, clark was on it as no a way. as a, a secretly gay policeman Love uh, my life. yes and so he played a he played a gay policeman on the show and i don't know if he knew he was playing a gay p- policeman but the writers did <laughs> and uh night court was great I, I'm, I'm sad that you've never seen night court it was on for nine seasons and it was it was a great show don't it was one of my all-time favorites you should you should really see night you've ever seen barney Barney Miller? No, but I've heard of it. Okay, Barney Miller was, uh, a lot of the guys who created Night Court wrote for Barney Miller. Anyone who likes comedy, I've said this before, should watch Barney Miller. It's, it's, it takes place in one room. It was on for seasons and seasons and seasons, hundreds of episodes. What was the They room? never leave this room. It's about cops, and they're oh. just in this cop uh, office. I don't know, precinct is the word I'm looking for. A cop office. And, a cop uh, Yeah, a cop if. And it's just five guys in a room talking every episode. And it's funny and engaging and you never get bored. And Whoa. it's just the best writing. It's fantastic. And so a lot of those, the two of the guys that worked on Barney Miller created Night Court. And it's sort of a similar show in a lot of ways. But Night Court's a little bit more silly. And Night Court's great. I should probably say this after we're done recording. But if you ever need a house sitter. <laughs> you can just watch I'd things all weekend. i more than happy. Feel free. Yes, you can. Watch our, our very watch unfriendly cat. cat. Uh, yes, I will take you up on that at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> we we have all these shows. It's hours and hours of our party, That's fine. Which You'll would be very sitcom It maybe? would be. As long as you clean up and just finish cleaning up two seconds before you get into the house, that it's would be so fine. Early. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not supposed to be back till tomorrow. Friday night, the last night of the week, on TV Guide Week, 8 o'clock, what do you got? Nothing. Nothing again. Yeah. I would have thought you would have gone with Perfect Strangers, the TJF. Well, I, I didn't know you could repeat things. Well, it's a different episode. Okay. <laughs> uh, or Beauty and the Beast. All girls like Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that's actually my favorite Disney movie. This Ex- was not the Disney movie. Oh. <laughs> this is the <laughs> TV wildly. series. What? They remade it this year. It starred Linda Hamilton from Terminator 2 and Ron Perlman, who played Hellboy. I've okay. seen the Hellboy movie. Very ugly man, uh, oh. but very good actor. Is He's he in, wearing makeup in Hellboy? Yes. That's oh, not okay. what he really looks like. Uh, but he was also wearing makeup in Beauty and the Beast. They took off his beast makeup. Yes. It was just Hellboy. Yes. It was a fantasy series where they were in love and he lived in the sewers. Girls loved it at the time. 8.30, Full House? Full House. Okay, Full House. You Full House with? was my, your, what was your family ties? The one with the really, really sad finale. Oh, that's Family Ties. Yeah. yeah. So that to you, Full House was for me. So the just in general or the finale? The finale. I could not comprehend a show ending. Right. That's the one where Michelle fell off the horse and exactly. got amnesia. It's yeah. the two-part episode. Yeah. yeah. And DJ goes to the prom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that was tough. I, I, I watched that. I was a little too old for it, but I did. I checked out of Full House for the last couple of seasons, but I did tune back in for the finale. I loved Full House. That was my favorite. Favorite. That and Punky Brewster were my favorite shows. So you like stuff kid. about dead mothers? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, you're much. like as long as the mom's dead in this show, Name I love one it. One show from the early '90s where there's not a dead mom. We had Blossom's dead mom. Well, she was away. She was a singer. Oh, she wasn't dead. Oh, she was. She might as well have been dead. Yeah, she was not. Yeah, present. there was a lot of dead or abandoned or just deadbeat moms. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And to be fair, Punky Brewster also didn't have a dad. That's true. She had a headache. She was abandoned. Yes. She only had a, a confirmed bachelor to watch her with his French cuffs. <laughs> uh, nine o'clock, Friday night, what do you got? Nothing. Nothing. I, I will admit, this one was tough. The movie Six Pack was on, which is not a great movie. It stars Kenny Rogers, and he plays Diane Lane's dad. 
in this movie. I love Diane Lane. There was a David Bowie concert on, which is probably what I would have watched at that time, but no sitcoms on. Uh, golf was on. It was it was a pretty dire slot on that Friday night. I I'll saw give you that. women's bowling somewhere. Women's there. bowling was I on. Just put that down. Yeah, I, I used to watch bowling a lot. Bowling was how you knew Saturday morning was over. When <laughs> candlepin bowling came on, bowling Whoa, ended the Saturday morning. Wait. I remember when Saturday morning was over because one Saturday morning was done. It was that yes. Disney thing. Did yes. you ever watch that? I did. I watched that and I was way too old to watch that. Yeah. yeah. It was Doug, Recess, Pepper yeah. Ann. Yeah. Oh. And I then was like, Science Court. I was like, uh, made by Tom Snyder Productions, who did uh, Dr. Katz and home movies. Squiggle Vision. And Squiggle Vision. So finally, Daniel Soto, uh, TV Guide, and you're not familiar with this in that this is your first experience using a TV Guide. How did you find using a TV Guide? Was it was it user-friendly or was it a little difficult? Now that I've seen you handle it, okay. I feel like I could handle it better. Well, that's good. That I take that as a compliment. Yeah. Uh, but TV Guide doesn't just inform us. TV Guide has opinions, and it cheers and it jeers. And every week it has a section called Cheers and Jeers. Before we get to Cheers yes, and Jeers, can absolutely. I give a shout out to absolutely. another Friday show? It was yes, at indeed. 7 o'clock, yep. Three's Company. Three's Company was a purely sleazy show, uh, but entertaining nonetheless. What was your, who was your favorite roommate on Three's Company? Probably Chrissy. Chrissy, really? So you were Suzanne Summers. Definitely. Did you watch uh, Step by Step? Of course. Yes. On TGIF. Uh, yeah, I like Joyce DeWitt. I was, uh, really? I was a Joyce DeWitt fan. Really? Yes. Yeah, I like Joyce DeWitt. Also, I just think that, you know, the Dra- Jack Tripper character was like, He's a chef. He's pretending to be gay. He's wearing short so shorts. So funny. He just cracked me up. I Everyone John loves John Ritter. Ritter. So you would have really loved Hooperman. You should yeah. check out Hooperman. Yeah. So I'm going to read you these cheers and cheers and jeers and see if you agree or disagree. Uh, I suspect you may not have enough information to make this decision, but Lay let's go me. with it. So cheers to ABC's China Beach for putting a fresh twist on the old tired drama. This is the first series that speaks directly to the experiences of the thousands of women who served in Vietnam. <laughs> You ever seen China Beach? Dana no. Delaney? You know it? It's a great show. Really oh, good show. Okay. So they've cheered it. I would agree with that cheer, but I think you all you have to abstain from voting okay. as you're unfamiliar with China Beach. Oh, so now abstaining is okay. You can abstain for cheers and cheers. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, cheers to ABC's probe for Santa bashing during the family hour. In an episode of the Scientist Detective Show airing at 8 p.m., Austin James said two disparaging things about St. Nick, including 20 million children see Santa Claus every year, but the hard evidence says the guy's bogus. One of our readers wrote to complain that this casual revelation necessitated a heart-to-heart talk with his distraught seven-year-old. I don't know why people find it so necessary to defend Santa Claus. He's doing fine. I think He's they're fine. more. I think they're more upset that this show basically said, "Hey, kids, you know that Santa? Not real." I think a lot of shows do that just for no reason. Yeah. Oh well, uh, maybe not for no. I reason. I think it's weird that they're complaining about that, and this is from May. Yeah. Like you know, I think that six months after Christmas, it's okay to say Santa's not real. Oh, excuse me. It makes me sneeze talking That's about Santa true. Claus. I'm allergic to revealing the truth to children. <laughs> uh, so you're, you're agreeing with that cheer or you're, you're saying, hey, get over it. It's not get a big deal. over it. Uh, our next one is a cheer to Cinemax for making good on its promise to bring cable subscribers more and more movies. That's it? That's it. They're just happy that Cinemax has shown a lot of movies. I like it. Yeah, Straight I to think the it, point. I think it'd be hard to disagree with that one. Be like, no, you know, <laughs> Cinemax should sell less movies. There's too yeah. many. Yeah, no, Cinemax is doing its thing. And finally, jeers to NBC's Saint Elsewhere for ending such a delightful series on such a bizarre note. This is famous. Are you familiar with Saint Elsewhere? No. It was a, a hospital drama. It was a bit like ER. Okay. And in the last episode, the show had been on for eight seasons. They revealed that the entire series was a fantasy taking place in an autistic child's brain. Whoa! Yes, yes. People did not like it, and they're jeering that. They so. didn't like that? I would no. have loved that. The show's final episode is, is suggested that everything has been the simple fantasy in the mind of one of the show's minor characters. Talk about pulling the rug out from underneath an audience. This was a jarring slap in the face. No, I think I would have loved that. I love, like... Kind of creepy. That reveal. Yeah. So your favorite show you've been watching for, you find out Golden Girls. All was a fantasy well, in an autistic child's brain. You would be not, cool with that. Let's not go. Well, I'm just trying to hit close to home with this one. So you might you have really to sleep are. on it. Yeah. You really are. I don't think you'd like that. No, I guess not. So now you, you know how not, they feel. 
It's different. Because it's a show you've never heard of. Right. <laughs> right. Fair enough. So he will uh, disagree with the cheer. That with has the nothing cheer. to do with me. It has no connection to your life. Uh, well, Daniel Soto, thank you so much for being on um, the TV pleasure. Guidance Counselor. Um, and this has been informative for me. It's and hopefully you'll check out some of this stuff in the future. Thank, thank you, Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was Danielle Soto as the TV Guidance Counselor Boston Marathon continues. Again, I want to remind you that Wednesday night at 8 o'clock at Improv Boston, if you're in the Cambridge area, I'll be doing a live TV Guidance Counselor with my guest Mary Mack. And again, thank you guys for coming out to the Eugene Merman Comedy Festival. And I always love seeing you guys. Thank you for saying hello. It, it It's nice that there are actual people who listen to this show. I know I see download numbers, but it's it uh, I don't always believe it. So it's nice that people come in and say hello. And we'll have more episodes today. There, there's more coming. It is a marathon after all. I won't have 26.2 episodes. That was a little ambitious for me, but there, there's more than one, more than two, obviously. Uh, again, email me, uh, tvguidancecounselor at gmail.com or canadaicanread.com, and we'll see you again next time on TV Guidance Counselor. Well, I was born in 1988. We had a toaster oven. That's why I don't trust people with neck braces. Couldn't prove that they had actually had sex because he did it so quickly.